Uh, Sally, thank you. Sally Lockwood uh, for us in Italy with an update on the situation there. Uh, we've been talking so far this afternoon about how the coronavirus outbreak is affecting the world of sport. Uh, we've just had this uh, from the world of tennis. Uh, the ATP has announced a six week suspension of the men's tennis tour due to concerns over COVID-19. So that's uh, the men's tennis tour, uh, ATP tennis tour suspended for the next six weeks because of concerns about the outbreak. More on that as we get it. So as countries around the world take drastic action to contain the virus, you've been hearing what's been happening in Italy and in Ireland. The government here in the UK is facing questions over its response. There's an emergency COBRA meeting taking place in Downing Street right now. Ahead uh, of the findings of that, I'm joined by Professor Sean Griffiths from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, who chaired the Hong Kong government's SARS inquiry back in 2003. Uh, Sean, good to see you. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. Um, Sean, you'll have been looking at the wider picture globally uh, in Europe and in the UK. It does seem that the UK is sticking out like a sore thumb at the moment in terms of its response being at odds to most countries affected in Europe. What's your take? Well, all responses have to be uh, proportionate within the culture within, you have to look at the health service, you have to look at the numbers, the trajectory, and weigh all these things up and make the decisions that disrupt society as little as possible, because there's a disbenefit to acting quickly, as well as to uh, to acting quickly. So this is a matter of uh, balancing, and the um, UK government has been very clear that it's science-led, so it's looking at the evidence, and in many circumstances, we're always going, where's the evidence? Well, this time they're using the evidence to say, well, if we we take these steps, the modelers tell us we can expect this outcome. So far, we haven't seen the huge increase that happened in um, Italy. And that could be partly because the whole containment phase has at least in part been successful at identifying, isolating uh, patients who are positive, um, getting the general public on board with the hand washing messages, uh, the, the hygiene messages. Uh, and, and in general, we may have found that this may be slow things down. Now, if we were to see a sudden rise in cases, I'm sure you'd see a, a change of the policy, but it's it's a sort of unrolling policy. And if you look at the advice from the World Health Organization, uh, they, uh, they're they very clear that uh, you, you have to think about the social disruption of the measures that are being taken. So uh, I, I think that's the approach as we're more cautious uh, based on can we actually minimize the damage to the economy, maximize um, uh, the uh, the containment phase. And of course, don't forget when the delay phase comes in, you don't abandon all the, uh, the containment phase, it still carries on. You know, the, the positive things that we ourselves can do and then the contact tracing isolation. We may see some changes, we may see uh, being asked to stay home more, uh, but I'm sure that it'll be a, a these things will all be explained um, after the COBRA meeting. Yeah, looking at it with your expertise and your experience from SARS back in 2003, is the clampdown on mass gatherings, and I'm particularly thinking about sporting events where thousands of people uh, come together, is it right that they should be postponed for a, a, a determinate amount of time? Is that the, the logical next step, do you think? Well, well, I think a postponement of, um, in, in uh, Hong Kong, we used to use the phrase mass gatherings. So at any time when you've got large numbers of people together, and, and especially if they're packed tight together, uh, you increase the risk of transmitting uh, the virus, if the virus is at a certain level within the population. And uh, so it, isn't a, it, it is a very sensible idea to, uh, to limit um, sports fixtures. That's one of the moves that um, occurs in any um, contain in any um, uh, phase where you're actually looking at social distancing that's the phrase that's used social distancing uh, and uh, so I think that the, those measures are proportionate that the measures that are being taken are quite proportionate I, I think we just heard that the ATP are, uh, are putting in a six-week suspension well the other thing to remember it's only six weeks and although it seems a long time right at this moment uh, it will pass and just will just as you look at the epidemic 
in Wuhan in China, when we were looking at it six weeks ago, it looked a very different picture from what it looks like today. So you can say that if people pull together and uh, decisions are made appropriate to the situation, then we can contain this virus. And I think that that's the message. This is not a, uh, this is, you know, the virus isn't necessarily going to stay at a high level, ever, ever increasing level. It uh, can be controlled. Yeah, as you said, in China, they are reporting a slower um, rise in, in the number of cases. Uh, they seem to be getting a handle on it. Uh, remind us how the SARS outbreak was brought back under control. What lessons can be learned? Yeah, well, many of the same, many of the same issues. Uh, the first initial, um, there were a couple of cases, just as we've seen here. Then there was a rise when there was um, a super spreader. The SARS had actual a super spreader phenomenon, who actually became apparent when we look back in retrospect, rather than when we were looking at it at the time. Sorry, I just turned that off. Um, uh, and. Um, uh, so, so uh, basically, what uh, what SARS taught us was that you could uh, that you could then see that a contained environment and the condi and the measures were put in place in the contained environment. It was then stepped up once there was community spread. Uh, the, the, the measures in the community were stepped up and more was then done um, uh, in the community, and including stopping mass gatherings, including um, quarantine. They quarantined a whole block of, of flats. They took the, mem the people from the flats and put them in a, um, a holiday camp. Uh, and then gradually, as the numbers decreased, uh, the schools and universities closed, uh, and, and as the numbers decreased, things slowly got back to normal again. And what we saw in the tail off of SARS was that the cases, the, the sort of remaining cases of SARS were often elderly people who were uh, at uh, um, who were at increased risk, uh, but the general population rode the rode out the um, epidemic. So there were quite a lot of lessons in terms of if you're looking at an epidemic, you have an up. Uh, and then you have a sort of tail off down. And I think that's what we're seeing in China at the moment. Of course, the problem in China at the moment is re-importation of cases from uh, Europe in, in, into China. And um, so they put travel restrictions or they put increased um, screening at airports with some quarantine rules for people who are coming back from Europe so that they can actually avoid a sudden increase again in cases in China. OK, Professor Sean Griffiths, uh, really good to get your perspective. Uh, we'll leave it there. You're a very busy lady answering those emails and phone calls. Uh, your expertise in high demand at the moment. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Sky News. Thank you. You're watching the Sarah Jane Me Show here on Sky News. Coming up after the break with a growing number of sporting events in doubt. I'll be speaking to former England rugby player Will Greenwood about the coronavirus's impact on the world of sport.